Bosak Tu. A humble interview that he gave there. Uh, he's just saying he doesn't even think he's the best corner. I think um, perhaps there's truth to that. We'll never know until other corners play in Korean leagues like this. But um, or BlizzCon. Or yeah, BlizzCon. You know, that's <laughs> the only other place we're gonna find yeah. out. But um, giving a lot of hope, I guess, to anyone out there who who struggles to to think that they could defeat Korean players. And he's saying he's not even the best. And there are definitely people out there who can do it. Focusing on this match at hand, this is a rematch, of course, of the Team Kill GSL Finals. People are favoring Zest 80 to 20, but to be totally honest, I'm actually kind of favoring TY here myself. Um, yeah. Zest is a great player, and these maps could certainly lead him down a road to win this best of five, but let's see what maps we get here. Yeah, I really want to see the map pool. Uh, we do see Apotheosis banned by TY and Galactic Process by Zest. So we are going to see King Sejong Station and Gettysburg come out. You can see, obviously, Zest picking Gettysburg first and King Sejong Station being picked by TY. A little bit of a surprise to me that Dawson Station is the last map in this pool. It looks like TY does not want to play like Maru did, does not want to use Dawson Station as this aggressive cheese map. And I mean, stylistically, TY has never really been a, an aggressive player or an all inner. He normally is the type of player who defends and will not take any damage. I mean, he's like the Terran version of Trap. He holds anything that gets thrown at him. Uh, We'll see if uh, this ends up being a, a game, or rather a series that goes to game five. Both of our first ones did. If this one also goes to game five, I'm really curious to see how TY is going to play DOS on station specifically. I don't think he's ever proxied in his life, okay? <laughs> I don't think he's ever really, I don't think he's ever made a cycle. Except that one time against Classic That's in that right. one game. That was the, that, that was, was That was his first time in his life. He was really nervous. It worked out well. Coach told him, he didn't do any more. Coach told him not to do it. He was like, or he told, coach told him to do it. He was like, I can't do it. <laughs> he went through with it at the end won uh, the Pro League Finals with that proxy, but I'm being obviously a little bit facetious because this is not something uh, that he is known for. And we'll see what he does against Zest. Again, if we reach that fifth and final map, he's actually prioritizing Sejong Station here instead. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense uh, for sure in the, in the TVP matchup, but we'll see if Zest can sneak that game here. I think he's heavily favored coming into game number one. And I think that gives him a lot of momentum in the series. We'll see if he can actually uh, perform here going into game number one now, New Gettysburg for Zest versus TY. Here we are on New Gettysburg for map number one of the third best of five we've had today. Down on the bottom right, the purple Terran, it is TY, KT Rolster. His opponent from the same team, it is Zest, also of KT Rolster. Zest having a tough road out of his group, losing in fact to Neeb in that, uh, you know, the winner's match, whereas TY smashed Pet in his uh, with very, basically just straight up aggression using the the beyond build as we like to call it and just really really shut him down i mean it was pretty um one-sided what we saw there and, and uh, you know now he's gonna have to switch gears of course and play against his teammate which is always difficult to do and he's going for a very strange build actually back at home going for the um gasless cc this is not very mm. meta right now but it will give him a nice Eco lead, and he can counterattack, or not counterattack, but push across the, the map with Marines, with an early Marine count with this. We'll see how many Marines he does, or rather barracks he does make here. Does he go into a third one as this comes up? That would probably be the safest approach. But the fact that there's no gas just yet makes this really interesting to me. I mean, what is he going to be making here? I guess waiting for the Marines to pop out and go into orbital well, straight? I... Thirty With 300 minerals, he's going to make double orbital here in just a second. But then after that... Yeah. He's going to either, if he's crazy, we will make a third CC. I think what's more likely is he will take gases. Um, 
and start, of course, that path towards the tech. You can make two Marines at a time with this and keep making SCVs. But he still has a no surplus gas. of money, yeah. That's I mean, the thing. I mean, he could have made them earlier, at least one. And, uh... Oh, was he planning on... I wasn't really checks the watchtower. I was wondering if he was planning on maybe adding, like, four more parrots to the top of the map and doing one of those cheeses, like OGS and Snare style. He's going to make another CC. He is, I in think. In the main. Yep. This is, like, the greediest build I've ever seen. <laughs> this is Zest, insane. No Zest gas. doesn't scout this, so... He's a little bit in the dark right now about what is happening. But T.Y., let's, uh, even though we call this greedy, he is one of the best defensive Terran players in the world. All he needs is a siege tank, so he's going to eventually have to get gas to get that. <laughs> All um, he needs is one siege tank, and then it, it, it's GG there. No, no all-ins are going to kill him. But uh, I mean, he's famous for his siege tank play. Um, his name also in Korean means sun, and uh, people look to him as like the the god of macro and, and defending cheeses. He's not an all-in or he's not a proxy or um, you know, he's like a righteous Terran or something. Um, it's kind of the theme for him here in Korea. That's why his uh, his icon in Star League was actually a siege tank underneath the sun. Yeah. And it's, it's really interesting because we talk about this map, definitely one of the uh, most favored maps for PVT that we have in the pool. And, you know, Apotheos is up there as well. But New Gettysburg probably right behind it. And it's... You always think about the different ways to play around that. Maybe you play greedy, try to get a lot of early damage. Maybe you go for a Wood of Mine drop, something like this. Uh, maybe you, you go for an all-in, like some kind of proxy. But this is the total opposite, where it's the economic cheese, you know, in a way where it's like, if if Zest just knew, if he just scouted, he could have made some gateways and w went over there and killed him. <laughs> I don't know, he's making a bunker now. He didn't have it before, right? Like, maybe he could have just walked over across the map and killed him because he spent so much money uh, investing into this early stuff, but now that T.Y. has essentially gotten away with it, or, you know, he's he's still some time, I suppose, Zest still could move across the map with Blink or something like that, but it looks like he wants to take his own third base. T.Y. has essentially gotten away with it, and so it, it pays off, this kind of uh, greedy economic play. With this third base, I feel like Zest really has two pretty, uh, you know, pretty amazing choices he can make now that he knows what's going on. One is to use these uh, gateways he has to just continue to warp at Stalkers and poke and kind of contain TY on two bases. Another one is to make a relic support bay and play like we saw Stats play earlier on with a fast tech. Okay, there's the bay coming up right now. So he's going to go into Colossus tech and it's going to be a while before Zest can actually do anything, or, or excuse me, TY can do anything. Now he tries to scout the third base, but a Stalker is well placed. He is denied. Ooh, and these three Stalkers actually get off here. You can use these Stalkers to defend the prison for another warp in. He's taking great trades here. The first Marauder is going to make this a little bit harder, but still microing very well with the Warp Prism. Going to pick off as much as possible. And yeah, you know, it, many people perhaps at home are saying, you know, why do you want to go into the macro game against the Protoss on this map? Like you were saying, I mean, this is going to give Zest the safest Colossi of all time. And Stats was saying, you know, if you can get Colossi out, yeah, they're super greedy, but if you can get away with it, well, then you're in a fantastic spot. And yeah. Uh, you know, he's getting other tanks with that as well. He's getting his Twilight Council up. He's getting his gateways up. And, you know, still looking for damage. And even though TY did get that very early third CC and orbital, he is only now moving it over to land, uh, which makes sense just based on the saturation. But still, you know, Zest is going to have that up and saturated before TY, even so. Two SCVs killed here. Stim is done. But look at TY's army. He has a very large army. Oh, mistake here. TY has a large army supported by the extra SCVs and the mules. And if he snipes this prism, it would obviously give him a huge opportunity. Oh, this stalker. Whoa, oh, oh, he moves back to save the stalker and loses everything. Oh, that was a mistake. I was, I was literally in, in the middle of saying the stalker will give, you know, die because he's, he's out of range. Um, and then he turned right back into the marine range. Nice scan here. Now, without this prism, there's no counteract pot counter attack potential. TY can literally walk across the map and put on some heavy pressure before the Colossus count gets high, before he has support for the single Colossus. If he's aggressive here right now, he has so much power without the prism being on the map. But instead, he's, he's really just sitting back. You know, obviously, he doesn't have combat shields yet, but he's allowing Zest this extra time to get a second Colossus out, finish his extended thermal lance, get more buffering adepts, and then suddenly, on this map, Adepts will literally just shade into his third base. He doesn't even need a Prism. And then he's going to be stuck at home defending while Zest just furthers his double Forge upgrades, which he'll be behind with a plus one very briefly. But then will be sets and sets ahead uh, with Chrono Boost and two Forges. Yeah, Zest does need to be careful about where he's standing on the map here because it still is a very strong uh, Terran army in the middle of the map uh, that he has been able to build up just based off of how much 
uh, economy from the mules, the extra mules and workers that he got from that third base, that third orbital. And uh, he's going to be pushing towards the third base, it seems. He has control of the watchtower now. Is that an observer or a stalker? What is that actually just to the left of our screen? I don't know. If it's an observer, he's already kind of seen this push coming. If it's a stalker, he has not. Um, we're going to see in just a second. Looks it's like probably an observer. an observer, okay. yeah. So he's any, regardless, he's seen this now. TY did not deny this in time. And as a result, uh, we'll have to scan here. And you can see just the amount of time he gave Zest gave him like three more warp hits. Now he has eight adepts with two colossi, range and three sentries. One, one, going to be done very soon. It'll put him a whole set of armor. Upgrades ahead is working on Blink with a fourth base. Not to say that TY is out of this game by any means, but with what Zest has been able to accomplish tech-wise here, TY doesn't have a single bike, he only has two Liberators. And now he is going to be playing a game with basically four medevacs. You know, that's not enough healing for his army. When he has to kind of transition um, into Vikings immediately, as you guys can see, even making a second starport, he knows the position tech-wise he's in right now. I like this move, going for a double drop. Uh, this one observer, we were talking about this before, there's not many flight paths you can take. He immediately responds, but let's see what damage this can d get. It looks like he's going for the natural. There are those two forges in the main that I was thinking maybe he would try to pick off one, but... Oh, I like this a lot. He draws a lot of the army away here, but still, Zest is prepared. He has units over here, too. He's so well split. There are three pylons in the main base over here as well. He might get stuck in here if the Mothership core comes back. Probes are off the line. Okay, here's the core. Two Widowmines gonna burrow, though. Will they get the shots off? Oh, they do. He targets it down, which means now this drop can't escape. Meanwhile, two Liberators worth of damage here. Kill six probes. Sick multitasking here from TY. Look at this. There's no Colossi over here. He can easily take this trade against only Gateway units. He's and really Zesty's just not even paying attention. He's looking at this drop over here. The Liberator's killing his natural. TY taking fantastic trades. That's it. He just gets out of the game. That's it. GG. Zest, his Colossi were the backbone of his army. To fight TY's army, he needed to be all together. His Colossi got no value because they were defending the drop in the main base where he actually didn't need Colossi.